to rebuke the adversary for the church's sake that we set out to do and accomplish what you've given us to do. Give us laser focus. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. The difference between us and them. It is amazing how we as a society have a tendency to separate ourselves. And we separate ourselves on so many different levels. We often bring about a category of us and them. We'll separate ourselves because of gender, because some are born male and some are born female. And let me parenthetically say, I don't care how confused some folks are right now. Baby, you are what your DNA say you are. And however God allowed you to break the womb, that's who you are. But in this day and time, we still have a tendency to separate ourselves by gender. I can remember back in the 70s going on the battle of the sexes we're simply trying to say there is an us and a them simply because of the gender that you were born uh, we separate ourselves by our socio-economical structure uh, we have the rich and the poor we have the haves and the have-nots uh, we have those on this side of the tracks and those on that side of the track uh, and we have a tendency to distinguish ourselves simply because of how much money we have in the bank uh, we separate ourselves because of our political views uh, we have right wing and left wing we have democrats and republics we have those who are liberal and those who are conservative uh, and we have a tendency to be separated on this side or that side not understanding that God placed us our differences together that we might benefit us all but sides uh, and said you either Even in the sports arena, again, I remind us I am a sports fan and I have a tendency to pick my team. And when I pick my team, it's either us or them. Even when we deal with the situation that we have right now, the racial tension in our society has caused us to feel like there's either us or them. You're either black or white. But the problem that I have is as we begin to look at this us and this them, maybe the issue is it shows how messed up we are as humanity. Maybe the problem is our depravity is starting to come to the surface uh, because anytime you begin to separate uh, who you are you delineate from what God has made you to be uh, we need to understand that we have more in common uh, than we have that support uh, don't be distracted by our diversity uh, baby you need to let our different distinctions uh, unify each other I don't know about you uh, but I'm glad everybody don't look like Terrence Grooms uh, I'm glad God has given us some versatility uh, that we can have some flavor. I'm glad that everybody don't walk like me uh, and talk like me uh, and think like me. Uh, Cause can I drop something in your bucket? Uh, baby, I ain't all that. Uh, and I need somebody uh, to balance me out. Uh, I need a different perspective. Uh, I need a different worldview. Uh, we got to understand this us and them mentality. Uh, our world apart. We focus too much on our differences when we need to pay attention to our commonality. I stopped by to remind you that in humanity, we got more in common than we have what separates us. First of all, we all have the same physical needs. We understand how it is. Uh, baby, I don't care whether you live on West Boulevard or in Ballantyne. Uh, you need a roof over your head. Uh, I don't care if you eat steak or you eat beans. Uh, you need food on your table. Uh, I don't care if you wear cotton or you wear silk. Uh, you need clothes on your back. Uh, God has made us uh, to have the same physical needs. Uh, and when we recognize that we're all in this boat together, uh, then maybe we'll one to another we need to focus on the fact that, that not only do we have the same physical needs uh, but we have the same emotional needs everybody needs to be secure everybody needs to understand that when the storm comes I've got some protection 
Everybody needs to recognize that no matter what's going on around me, there's something that I can depend on. Can I drop something in your bucket? Because I feel a little preaching right now. And what we've got to understand is what brings us our security is not our bank account. What brings us our security is not the roof over our head. What brings us our security is not our educational background. But what brings us security is the God that we serve. We have a need to recognize there's a better day coming. Uh, we have a need uh, to understand that there's more to life than this. Uh, we have a need uh, to recognize that I'm protected, uh, but can I help us out? Uh, we're only protected uh, when we place ourselves in the hand of God. We've got the same emotional needs. We all need to feel secure. Truth be told, we all need to feel loved. You might as well say amen. I know most of us who've been around this block a time or two have been battle scarred and wounded. I know most of us have been let down by somebody, put down by somebody, forgotten by somebody. But at the end of the day, you keep reaching out because you need somebody to love you just because of who you are. You need somebody to appreciate you just because God has allowed you to break the womb. And when I look at the fact that, that we all need love, one of the reasons why we act the way we act is because we feel like don't nobody they love us uh, that causes us to act out uh, that causes us to degrade uh, that causes us to look down uh, that causes us to oppress uh, but I've discovered uh, that when I recognize somebody loves me uh, it causes me to treat them a little bit better uh, when I recognize that somebody loves me uh, it causes me to give them a little more respect uh, when I recognize somebody loves me uh, it causes me to put my arm around them uh, and embrace what's in best for them uh, because of our need for love uh, it causes us to respond to the can I preach this Sunday morning we've got the same physical needs we have the same emotional needs and baby truth be told we have the same spiritual needs we need to understand one thing that all of us were wretches undone all of us crossed that theological line when God said don't and we did anyhow. All of us was on the fast track to hell and enjoying the ride. But aren't you so glad that in the midst of your highway, God put a stop sign and then gave you a U-turn? Baby, we need to understand we all are sinners. We all have been undone. We all need the same forgiveness. Oh, can I preach this up in here? What we need more than anything else is redemption for our souls. What we need more than anything else is forgiveness of our transgressions. What we need more than anything else is the blood applied to our lives we all have the same need and the reason we have the same need is because we're in the same mess so I've discovered that in the midst of our us and them baby it's only one us and them it's not your gender because your gender going to stop at the grave. When you inhale and exhale the last time, and as my grandmother used to say, your tongue cleaves to the roof of your mouth, uh, and that heart gives that last your soul's gonna leave this body and that male or female gonna turn to dust and we're gonna go to God as we were and God's not gonna see gender but he's gonna see the real nature of who we are the Bible says we'll be like the angels we'll be genderless so don't put so much stock in the fact that you put your britches on one leg at a time baby we need to understand that our gender is at the grave our social economic structure also stays right there. Baby, I don't care how many degrees you earn. There's only one degree that's going to get you in heaven. It's a BA degree, as we used to say. And it's not a bachelor's of arts. It's a born again. 
And we need to understand that the moment that I inhale and exhale, the last time, the moment I give up the ghost, uh, my degree does not take me and follow me to glory. Because uh, when I get to glory, I'm going to find out just how much I really don't know uh, about how awesome and powerful my God is. Uh, I can't educate myself enough. Uh, I can't articulate it enough uh, to describe the beauty and the splendor uh, of the creator of the heavens and the earth. Uh, so I recognize that my degree is going to lead me to ineptitude uh, when I try to see how awesome, uh, how powerful powerful and wonderful and majestic uh, that God really is. Uh, I recognize that my money is going to stay right behind uh, and that which I leave behind uh, if my wife don't spend uh, the kids will spend. Uh, if the kids don't spend it, uh, the state will get it uh, and somebody's going to leave uh, or spend uh, the so my money is going to stop at the grave uh, so I need to understand that my money is not that important. Democrats and Republicans going to sit at the same table either in heaven or in hell because truth be told God don't have a political alignment for either side you're either in or you're out so baby I stopped by to remind you I don't care how much of a Democrat you think you are don't make that more important than being saved because your democracy stops at the tomb can I preach it the way I feel There is only one, us and them that matter, and that is whether we're saved or whether we're not saved, because that's what takes us into eternality. That's what takes us on into forever. That's what takes us into the very presence of God. But I need to remind us uh, as we look at the difference between the saved and the unsaved, uh, what is the true difference uh, that God has placed in us? Uh, as we look at the us and the them, uh, what makes us any different uh, than those who are still on the outside? Uh, what makes us any different? Uh, still caught up in their sins because uh, we need to understand uh, that we were in a mess just like them. Uh, baby, your pants might, might not have been hanging down, uh, but your mentality was hanging down. Uh, you might not have been a harlot with your body, uh, but you've been a harlot with your soul. Uh, you might not have gambled with your money, uh, but you gamble with your spirit. Uh, so what makes us different? Church, I'm glad you asked. Since this is 11 o'clock and you ain't got nowhere to go but home and cook dinner, can I take my time? We need to understand that in Exodus, it teaches us the difference between us and them. Can I walk the text a little bit before I hit my points? Because we need to realize what is going on in the story. As I declared on last week, God allowed 10 plagues uh, to come to Pharaoh to prove uh, that he's God all by himself. Uh, Legs, uh, to attack 10 Egyptian deities uh, to remind them that baby I don't care what you lean and depend on uh, unless you lean and depend on God you're leaning on sinking sand uh, but I want us to understand that when we look at the story uh, the first three plagues were universal uh, that which God allowed to Egypt uh, he also allowed to happen to Israel uh, when he allowed the, the Nile River uh, to be turned to blood and there was no refreshment in, in Egypt uh, there was no refreshment in Israel uh, when they allowed the frogs to come up uh, and come through the land in Egypt uh, the frogs also infected Israel uh, when they allowed the lice to take over in Egypt uh, he allowed it to deal with the people in Israel uh, why were the first three plagues universal because uh, the Bible reminds us that uh, God reigns on the unrighteous and the righteous uh, he allows the sun to shine on the just uh, and the unjust uh, sometimes a sovereign God uh, will show you he's God all by himself uh, and the reason why he allows you to deal with some of the issues of this world uh, is because we've gotten too much like the world uh, can I preach the text a little bit longer see we don't like to admit it but truth be told we still got some Egypt in us we still enjoy the things of this world more than the presence of our God we still enjoy feeling good rather than being good we enjoy looking holy uh, rather than walking holy. Uh, and the problem that we had, uh, as long as Israel stayed in Egypt, uh, they began to worship like the Egyptians. Uh, they began to walk like the 
they begin to talk like the Egyptians uh, and that's what's wrong with today's church uh, now we look like the world uh, we act like the world uh, we talk like the world uh, we become selfish and self-centered uh, it's all about me myself and I uh, but I love the song that reminds us uh, how great uh, thou art uh, I'm so glad uh, that when God arrests your brain uh, you recognize that baby it ain't about you uh, it's all about him uh, and the reason why we had to deal with some of this mess uh, is because we let the world make us think uh, it's all about you uh, and the Bible says uh, we're nothing but dust the three plagues were universal because Israel got caught up in Egypt's sin let me ask you a personal question whose sin are you caught up in that one's for the text also reminds me that God drew the line. Hear me good now. God showed up to Moses, said, Moses, I want you to go tell Pharaoh, this next plague I'm sending is going to stop at Goshen. I understand that they're just right across the street. But when the, when the flies come, there's going to be a wall of protection that's going to keep Goshen protected while your people suffered. I want us to understand the scripture reminds us uh, that as Mr. Moses, uh, he was telling Moses the reason why I'm going to draw the line uh, is so that you will know uh, I'm God all by myself. Uh, can I preach this Sunday morning? Uh, sometimes God's got to remind us uh, that the reason why you made it out uh, is because I protected you. Uh, the reason why this when other folk lost their job is because I protected you. The reason why the virus hit this house and skipped your house is because I protected you. The reason why the accident took out that car and left your car alone is because I protected you. Is there anybody here that recognized had it not been for the hand of God, that same virus that took somebody else out would have took me out. That same accident Accident, uh, that wiped out my neighbor uh, could have took me with him. Uh, I'm so glad uh, I got protection uh, called grace. Uh, I've got protection uh, called mercy. Uh, I've got protection uh, called the hand of God. Uh, and I refuse to get beside myself uh, and think that I'm here by my merit. Uh, I'm here because the Lord has brought me. God reminded the people, I'm going to draw a line in the sand that the plague can't cross so that you will know that I'm God. You see, that's what happens sometimes. We get so caught up in the blessings until we forget the blessor. We get so caught up in what we got until we forget who gave it to us. We get so caught up in where we are until we forget how we got there. And God has to remind us, baby, the reason why you are where you are right now is because I picked you up out of your mess, uh, brought you into a place of solid ground, uh, cleansed you up, uh, and now folk can look at you and say, look where. But I've got to ask the question, what is the difference between us and them? Because when you look around, Israel had been in Egypt now 400 years. And Egypt had rubbed off on Israel. And so Israel began to eat like them. They began to worship like them. They began to think like them. Let me give you the spiritual influence if you don't mind. Because Egypt represents the world. And we got to understand that there was a time when we were just like the world. We ate like them. We worshiped like them. We acted like them. And what makes us different now than where they are? Why did God separate the us from the them? What did God do to delineate the fact of from the saved from the unsaved? Well, the text suggests three things. The first thing the text suggests is what makes the difference between us and them is we've answered the call of God on our lives. 
help me, Holy Ghost. Don't look at me crazy. Take my time and preach this. Because there, there, there are several different calls of God, and I only want to deal with about three of them. The first call we often think about is the call into the gospel ministry. And I got news for you. Everybody can't do what we do uh, because you're not gifted to do what we do. Uh, but baby, that does not diminish the gift that God placed in you. Uh, so don't look up at the preacher and look down at yourself. Uh, recognize that just God gave me a different gift. Uh, and just because he's called to stand right there does not diminish what I do back there. Uh, so baby, that's not the call that I'm talking about. Uh, some of us are called uh, to a thing that God has done for us. Uh, we direct me. Uh, and so there's a specific purpose in our lives. Uh, but the call that I'm talking about uh, is the call of salvation, uh, where Bible declares uh, that the God that I serve says, uh, Come unto me, uh, all ye that are labored uh, and heavy laden, uh, and I will give you rest. Uh, we need to understand the difference between us and them uh, is that we've answered the call. Can I take my time? As I shared it at eight, I need to share again. There's a great theological problem that wrestles with the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. The sovereignty of God who has all power and nothing what happens without his knowledge and decrees all things versus the, the responsibility of man. Who, the sovereignty of God said it's his will that none perishes uh, and yet the man that we made uh, has a right to choose not to follow the sovereignty of God uh, and there are some that lean on one side uh, that think that everybody's saved simply because uh, God made them saved uh, and then there's the other side that thinks everybody is saved uh, because they choose God uh, but the reality is it's not an either or uh, but there's a marriage and a balance between the two uh, because God's sovereignty uh, spoke into man's heart uh, and God spoke to everyone everybody and reminded them how real he is. God spoke to everybody and reminded them of the mess they're in. God spoke to everybody and reminded them that you need a deliverer. But somewhere along your sanctified life, the Holy Ghost tapped you on your shoulder, gave you a break of sanity, allowed you to say, I hear you, God. Here am I. I'm so glad Abraham said, here am I. Take me out of earth. And here am I, bring us out of Egypt. Uh, you said, here am I, bring me out of darkness uh, into the marvelous light. Uh, when you answer the call of God, uh, that separates you uh, from them. And when you answer the call of God, then that covers you with the protection of God. It's right here in the text. Because you see, the Bible declared that God allowed the swarm of flies to come. Now, anybody ever had a fly in their house? No. A fly won't go where you want it to go. It's going to go everywhere where you don't want it to go. And what in the world caused the flies to get at the edge of Goshen and stop right there? What in the world caused the flies to get right at the border and stop right there? Can, can I make it personal? Uh, what in the world caused the disease uh, to see your house uh, and stop right there? What in the world? Uh, what caused the famine uh, to get to your door and stop? in the world uh, saw the mayhem uh, to see your residence and get right there baby i got news for you uh, it was the protection of god uh, that told the flies uh, you can't go to goshen uh, it's the protection of god uh, that told the disease uh, that's my child uh, it's the protection of god uh, that told the famine uh, leave that one alone uh, it's the protection of god i think we take for granted how the Lord has protected us. Can, can I share a personal testimony? I can remember coming down 277 in my little convertible. I had a truck on the right, and I've shared this before, so it ain't, it ain't news, and a truck on the left. And the truck on the left decided to come into my lane. I couldn't go right, because there was a truck there. Couldn't go left, because there was a truck coming. Couldn't stop because there was a car behind me. And if you ask me how in the world I survived, I don't know. But what I can tell you, it was the grace of God that protected me from danger and mayhem. So I can stop by and tell you the only reason why you're alive today is because God protected you.
But have you ever asked the question, why did God protect me? The same kind of issue took somebody else out. Why did God protect me? The same kind of tragedies in life caused somebody else to lose their mind. Why did God protect me? The same virus that's going around taking folk out of here. Why is it not taking me out? Why did God protect me? The same people that have lost their jobs. I, I still got money coming in. Why did God protect me? The same folk that's wondering how they're going to pay our bills when the courts open up. Why did God protect me? Church, I'm glad you asked because when you answer the call, he covers you with his protection because he wants to consecrate you for his purpose. Can I close it out like this? You see, you got to go back to where it started. God told Moses to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go so that they could come and worship me. You got to understand that the reason why God protected you is because he wants to consecrate you for his purpose. Can, 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 can I work with consecration for just a moment? Because you see, that's a phrase that we don't like to deal with. And that's, that's a misunderstanding that we have. And you need to understand that when God consecrates something, uh, the word literally means sanctifies. Uh, he set, apart, set it apart uh, for his purpose. Uh, that's why David said, uh, thou anointed my head with oil. Uh, in other words, God, you me uh, for your purpose. Uh, you're consecrating me uh, for your glory. Uh, you've been set apart uh, that God might get the glory uh, out of your life. Uh, you've been set apart uh, that you might give God the praise. Uh, God consecrated you. Uh, that's why you got to worship him. Uh, so when we come this Sunday morning,